Hello and welcome back to Man V Film. It's time for another exciting Blu-ray update. Exciting for me because man, I don't know everything that I've got within this package here. This has been sent by my friend Joel in Canada. Uh, we have a kind of package swap arrangement going on where he picks up some movies that I want and throws in some extras and I kind of do the same for him. Um, and it allows us to get stuff from each other's countries rather well, cheaper than what it would be to import them. And his package has arrived and I've waited uh, until I'm on the camera to open this uh, to catch my disappointment. Or probably surprise and excitement but what's in it. Now, no carry on this time. I, I've, I've already pre um, cut this box so I don't have the embarrassment of trying to open it like I did the last time. <laughs> so preparation is key. Nah, I'm only joking. I've got it done here. So we've got this big package here of goodies that we'll delve into. On the top of it, I see, um, I believe this is uh, Walt Flanagan's dog <laughs> from the, the toy range of clerks. There's, there's, it seems rather excited to see me, so it seems. Uh, inside we have a, a letter which I, I think Joel told me to, to open after. The fact, so we'll leave that to one side. And um, we've got the movies in here. And uh, let's just delve into this well bubble wrapped package. Can never have too much bubble wrap. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes! Yes! Uh, Joel did tell me about this one. Uh, it's kind of like a, a kind of jokey one. It was a movie I was going to pick up anyway, but it's something that's available here. Uh, 88 films have just started releasing titles in America and um, yeah well it's the Chinese boxer <coughs> Jimmy Wang Yu uh, the reason he's kind of sent me this is because I've sent him so many 88 films he just thought it'd be funny to send me one it was one I was going to pick up anyway I know it's one of the better regarded Wang Yu films uh, one of those ones where so blood fueled, you know, even just a little slap can cause someone to like hemorrhage violently. <laughs> I, I, from what I remember, it's been a long while since I saw it. Looking forward to going back to the Chinese boxer. I'm sure this that this is part of the Asia range, right? So we'll just we'll tear into it and see. Cause, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the full cover treatment it doesn't have the, the, the old pack, kind of packaging at the back there um, it's number 27 in the Asia collection a collection that I, I actually have a few reviews still ready to go I'm almost there I think I've reviewed up to 22 in the series so I've still got a few to get to um, let's jump into this package which looks like a criterion now I know Joel has, has seen all these movies. They're movies that he really likes and he's picked them up because he thinks that I probably would like them. Um, and looking at this first one, it's probably one that I wouldn't have picked up myself. Uh, directed by Lucio Visconti. It is... The Damned. Um, so, Visconti did uh, The Leopard, Death in Venice, uh, Ludwig, which I've got on Arrow. Uh, and this one looks like uh, it doesn't look like a kind of comforting easy Sunday afternoon type of film because uh, I did have a look at the trailer when it was announced in this one uh, I think it was right about a, a, a rich family in Nazi Germany who make weapons for the Nazis and uh, this young man becomes the sort of figurehead of the family and basically they just they're so depraved and, and, and bullish to each other that they just kind of destroy each other. Um, like I said, it's not one that I would have went out and, and picked up myself, but I do have it and I will check it out and hopefully um, it's not as nihilistic as it looks. Next up we have, oh, uh, we have The Breaking Point by Michael Curtiz. Um, now, Curtiz uh, did Casablanca, King Creole, uh, White Christmas, uh, Angels with Thirty Faces, all those kind of movies. This 
is a 1950 film noir. Yes! If I'm correct, now I have heard of this one but I haven't seen it. Um, sounds quite good. Uh, yep, a, a, a boat captain gets entangled with criminals and of course a femme fatale. Um, so other than that, I am pretty blank on this one. Uh, but you know, I do love film noir so I, I, I will be looking forward to getting into that one. Um, here we have a box of Severin or a, a package of Severin movies. This is one that Joel told me a while back I was going to get a sleazed filled 70s movie. Yes! Cannibal Man, uh, a Severin title and this is by uh, Elio uh, De La Inglesia and this is someone that I'm, I'm starting to sit up and take notice of as a filmmaker. This as uh, uh, this is one that I almost watched because it was on Amazon Prime, but you know, Joel told me to hold off. I'm really curious about this one because it's kind of been described or I've read about it as an inverted slasher, something that's portrayed to be within the sort of grimy, video nasty era of movies, you know, but it's more psychological along the lines of maybe psycho or repulsion a little bit with that. 70s uh, short lens which looks pretty good. The trailer is really kind of abstract on this one as well which I kind of liked. Well, please go in there if you want to. If that's what you need to, to ease your mind. What strange foreboding secret is within this room? Um, and then you look at plot synopsis on say Letterboxd and it makes it out to be an almost comedy of sorts. I, mean, I, I don't really know too much more about the movie but I'm really curious about whether it has that gore or whether it has that comedic moments or whether it is a, a kind of drama masquerading as a slasher which I'm kind of interested in that. And next up we have, <laughs> oh yes. Yes! I've wanted to see this for the longest while. Joe hasn't told me about this one. It's one of the surprise titles in here. And it is Robert Forster, The Banker. A late 80s serial killer movie. Um, now, I haven't seen this one, but I watched the trailer when it, they, they kind of did the 4K restoration. Um, and it, it, just, it just looks mental. You've got this kind of uh, death of high-class prostitutes. You've got Robert Forster as a detective and his, I think his ex-wife is a, a news journalist. The guy's hunting down, or the, I think I believe it might be the banker, uh, is hunting down these women with a crossbow and laser sight. It looks all kinds of gnarly fun. Robert Forster looks crazy. Um, the, the one thing that sticks in my head from the trailer when I saw this one was uh, just a, a little bit of Forster humour that was in this, you know, where a reporter's like, can you tell me anything about this case? And just like, wasn't me. <laughs> just, oh man, I'm, I'm super excited this one. It seems kind of uh, a little bit light on extras, but the extras do sound pretty good. You've got Robert Forster interview and uh, he remembers Joe Spinell. So I don't know what length that is, but should be good. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad to finally get to see this movie. Excuse me, Sergeant Jefferson, can you tell us something about the murder? It wasn't me. Uh, next, we have a couple of Arrow titles. <laughs> uh, one was like, uh, a movie that Joe got, he just didn't like. I liked it. Uh, it's a stylist. Now, believe it or not, this is not the actual cover. <laughs> we'll just take that off. Um, I liked the stylist. I thought it was a really strong debut. I thought the lead performance was great. It stars Brea Grant as well, who I really like. And uh, particularly with Arrow releasing all of these kind of newer movies I haven't heard of, to, to think of a, a perfectly fitting movie like Brea Grant's 12 Hour Shift not being in the Arrow collection is baffling. Uh, the stylist was really kind of fun, a kind of psychological horror movie with some great gore and effects. And I really kind of liked it as well. Well, see, when I um, was getting into movies and I was kind of finding new directors, 
mid nineties was great. You know, Robert Rodriguez, Tarantino, and Kevin Smith were kind of my my three that I latched onto that I really kind of liked their style. Um, I loved Smith's U.S. Universe. It was just comforting and I still do love it to these days even though I, I'm not so keen on the later movies um, up to maybe Jersey Girl or Clerks 2 was, was pretty fantastic for me and one of my favourites was always Mall Rats. Well did he come or what? So no it's not the most polished or fantastic movie uh, but just the sheer energy that Jason Lee brings to Brody character was so funny the, the laugh out loud scenes and the just the comfortable uh, nostalgic feeling I get from watching this is pretty terrific. Now I know this has several versions, it's the extended cut that I'm curious about. I'm really familiar with um, the theatrical cut which is uh, just over 90 minutes but the extended cut is 2 hours, 2 hours 2 minutes so I'm kind of curious what they've added in. Now it might not be great but I'm curious about checking it out and I know that this being Kevin Smith, there's probably lots of in interviews. I know there's an introduction with him on this disc that's a good half hour, which is just typical Smith, to be honest. Uh, Mallrats, absolutely love it. Uh, so now we're going to move on to some more Severin titles. And this, oh, this one's a surprise as well. It is uh, The Fourth Victim, uh, directed by Eugenio Martin. The man that did Horror Express. I love Horror Express. Um, I'm sure you've heard me mention it many times before. Review on the channel for it as well. Fantastic. I remember seeing this when I was, uh, or not seeing the actual movie, but the trailer when I was kind of researching sort of Lindsay and Baker when that set came out and looking at the movies that Carol Baker did. This one has just one of those really intriguing Gialli plots that you just know is going to go fun places. You've got this guy who's uh, been married three times, his wives have all died, and then this new blonde Carol Baker lady comes into his life and he starts a relationship, but she may not be um, as she possesses to be. She could be something else. You kind of see where it's leaning and where it's going. Uh, I do love Jolly movies, this one sounds pretty fantastic. Next up is another title that I don't think <laughs> Joe could believe I actually wanted in my collection. It's a nostalgic trip. It's one of those ones I can't believe Severin have put out, considering I've got like the fourth victim and a couple of other Severin titles here that just don't fit into that at all. Uh, that movie was, I think it was fairly cheap as well, <laughs> is Overboard. Yes! Uh, Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn, I think it was from 87, maybe 89, directed by Gary Marshall. It's a romantic comedy. You get um, a rich, spoiled woman in the form of Goldie Hawn who hires a, a handyman to come and build her a contraption for her shoes, I think it is, on the boat. And uh, that's Kurt Russell. And um, when she has an accident and falls overboard, uh, he discovers her and takes her home. She's amnesiac and she um, doesn't remember her place of that. And he kind of says that she's the mother to all his children and comedy ensues. It's been a while since I've seen this one, but I remember watching the hell out of it when I was younger. And it's just one of those ones where I was like, even just seeing the cover, seeing that the, the spine of my collection is going to give me the warm and fuzzy feeling that I like. And to be honest, I'm kind of looking forward to coming back and checking it out. So next up we have two 4K UHDs. Yes! Are definitely the pinnacle of this box set, which or this box of presents, which are pretty great already. Yes! And I just don't know where to go. I think I'll jump into this one. So last year, Arrow released uh, the Jodorowsky box set, which I thought was particularly great. I was kind of, uh, uh, you know, hadn't seen any Jodorowsky. Didn't know much about the man at all. And I, I jumped in and checked it out. And I've picked up his 1989 Santa Sangra. Uh, classic which should be fun this is a, a four disc set it's got the UHD the Blu-ray um, a disc of extras and there is no soundtrack now I believe it's a story uh, about a man <laughs> traumatised by the past he used to work in a circus who saw his father uh, 
cut the arms off his mother and, and traumatise him in whatever ways and him uh, reconnecting with his mother. What the heck is going on here? The trailer looks absolute bonkers, uh, as you would expect. Whether this will top the Holy Mountain is my favourite. Jodorowsky has yet to be seen, but I really do like his style. There's something kind of um, mesmeric about it almost. You know, you, trying to decipher the story, you just need to give up and just go with the flow and follow whatever wonderful uh, images he's showing you. So I'm really excited about checking this one out, particularly after seeing uh, some of his other movies which I really like, and then jumping a couple of decades to, to this one should be really interesting. And the last, and definitely not least, and you know, thank you Joe for sending me this, because this is a title that I, I really was excited about, really wanted, and I'm going to save this one for a, a week or so until my, my Vinegar Syndrome package comes in, because what I've got here is Paul Morris's Blood for Dracula, starring Udo Kier as Dracula, Wow, <laughs> just saying that uh, is just amazing because I love Udo Kia. Um, this has the UHD, a Blu-ray and has a CD soundtrack as well. I, I'm really over the moon to have this. This is going to be watched in conjunction with Flesh for Frankenstein, the Vinegar Syndrome release of the Paul Morrissey movie which came first so I'll probably watch that and then Blood for Dracula. I know this one sounds really good. Um, Dracula is ill, he goes to Italy because you know everybody's religious, should be full of virgins, virgin blood is what he wants and he gets to this school and I, you know, guessing by the trailer, they're kind of lying about their virgin status and the blood is poisoning him more and more. It looks really great, the 4K UHD transfer which I've seen clips of online looks amazing, Udo Kier in a, a main role should be fantastic because uh, you know this is a guy that should have had a much bigger career than he actually has. He's fantastic and, and should have been like a, a, a you know a huge star. But yeah, oh fantastic. Just need to wait in flesh for Frankenstein coming in, so I can have a double bill of these fantastic movies. Now, now for the letter that Joel has sent. So let's see what it says. Dear Man V Film, I hope these films find you and your family well and healthy. As we approach the holidays, I would like to wish you the best and a Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah and Festivals. The Breaking Point is one of the finest noirs of all time. Okie dokie. I think the damned will wreck you, um, which, you know, getting older, I, I, that's a feeling I want less and less. I just watched a movie that destroyed me the other day and I, I still haven't recovered from that. Uh, Santa Sangra will rock you, Jodorowsky rules, agreed. The Chinese boxer will delight you. Uh, Mall rats will comfort you, and ditto for overboard. Cannibal man will haunt you, and the fourth victim will bring some more Carol Baker in Europe. Same director as the Horror Express, yeah, <laughs> Eugenio Martin. Uh, the stylist bored me, and it's now your problem to deal with. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Blood for Dracula is excellent and hopefully you can double blow with Flesh for Frankenstein. You look rude in my mind, I just I just said that, Joe. Uh, Robert Forster is my favourite actor of all time. The Banker is a hidden crime film gem. Good work. Included is Walt Flanagan's dog. It came with Jane Silent Bob and I think he likes you. I think he likes me as well. All the best, buddy. Choose life, choose a career, choose Forrester from Joel. That's awesome. Um, I think there's a, a little PS here saying, um, if you're watching this, you should really join Graham's uh, membership program or Patreon. It's fantastic. I mean, I, I, I might say that. I may be just inferring that from the comments. Um, but there we have it. Ten amazing movies that I, I cannot wait to get into. Um, honestly, as I record this, it's uh, a kind of feeling like a nostalgic mood and I think I'm going to dive straight into Mallrats before I get to some awesome 
uh, genre movies as well. If you've seen any of these movies that I haven't seen and you've got thoughts on them or you want to educate me a little bit more uh, or get me primed for watching, of course, let me know in the comment box below. I think that's amazing. And as Joe says, there's the membership and Patreon, you know, whatever. It's Christmas if you want to throw me a bone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.